Welcome to Unit 1 of Unit 3, ICT and Organisations. Now to start off with, we're going to be looking at data information knowledge. We're going to be looking into how to validate information and what data actually is. So to get started, the advantages of ICT. Less storage space needed. In the old days, you would have cabinets. And these cabinets would be full of paper. And you would have rooms and rooms and rooms of cabinets. Well now, you can fit that all on a hard drive. Saving space. Also, we have high security. You can have encoding. You can have password protected documents. You can have permission rights to a certain part of the network. All of that adds to the security. It is quick for you to find data. In the old days in these cabinets, you would have had a look at the last name, it would have taken you some time. Well, now you can just filter through, have the information instantly. Excellent. Backup. In the old days, if you needed to back up a big file in the cabinet, you were there with a pen and paper writing it down. You would, there, there is it. Or you were photocopying it, which would take a long time. Well, now you can just copy and paste it. It doesn't take that long. If somebody got married and decided to change their last name, you would have had to make a whole new record for them. Well now, you can just quickly edit it on the system, no hassle. It is quicker to process information via the um, via computer than it is to actually have a person do it. You don't need as many staff because before you would need someone to do all the records, organise the records, do this, do that. Um, tills, you would have had more people needed to be on tills rather than having the serve your own. So one of the advantages is that you need the fewer staff, and but the staff need to know about how to use technology. You also have a range of ways data can be presented. You can have graphs, you can have images, you can have text. There's numerous ways that data can be presented in the ICT. Now disadvantages, there are a lot less disadvantages than advantages, is the cost of equipment. Equipment is not cheap, especially if you want the most up-to-date one, which I do, but I can't afford it. It is not cheap. Now, people who don't know how to use a computer actually find it very difficult, and that's also a disadvantage. And you're also, your computer system is under risk of viruses or hackers or any kind of cyber security. Now, what is good data? It has to be valid. It has to actually, and it to be correct, and it's got to be sensible. So, I mean, it's one, you're very unlikely to get a question saying, what is good data? but you will need to know that data has to be valid and it has to be sense, um, sensible in order to be good. So basically you can't have a birthday, which would be wrong and not sensible. So example, I can't say my birthday and I'm 120. Okay, it's just not good data. Now validation checks, you have to learn these. I am sorry, but they just need to be learnt. Um, a range check is when it must be between two numbers. For example, this could be used in a date. So, you know, you'd have, they would show you a number and say, this, this, this mistake happened. What kind of validation check could you have done? And if you say range check, mainly used for months, because it has to be between 1 and 31, the number. Check digits. Now, these are mainly used in um, barcodes. And I want you to actually look, go home and look at a barcode because the last one is a calculation of all of them. So the 13th number is always a calculation. Now you also have, they've also been used for I, oh, what's it? Um, yeah, ISBN, which is the books. The final digit is the check digit. So they do a calculation of the other numbers to make sure it goes. And also credit and debit cards. Now they're really long and the last digit is always a check digit of the others. So that's something you did not know. Now, presence check's really easy. It's just to make sure that it has actually been inputted. So you'll get a little thing saying you need to make sure you've had this. We've all seen that. Now, batch total is something that people find a bit more confusing. It checks whether a numerical data is missing or has been entered incorrectly. For example, it will calculate how many in a, in a batch, and then it'll say, right, OK, all of these were meant to add up to this. All these records of these different numbers were meant to add up to this, and it hasn't and then it will throw it back and say this isn't right which means the user has to go through and check them now the hash total is a bit more, it's a bit different it's basically a batch total which is meaningless which you might make think that is meaningless but 
It is. For example, it may sum up all of the people's telephone numbers or sum up all the account numbers. And the number has no meaning. I've, I've never seen, uh, I, very, I haven't seen a question about a hash total before in an exam. So I would still, you still need to know it, but it doesn't come up in exams very often. The batch total, the presence check, and the others do come out quite a lot. So you need to make sure that you know those. Now verification is very different from validation. Okay, say it with me. Validation is making sure that data is reasonable. Verification is double checking. So the ways to check for transcription errors, which is when people have written it down wrong, is a visual check where you actually have a look and you actually visually see if there's any problems. Double keying, which is basically where you have to key in the information twice. We've all had to do it. And parity check is basically checking that the data has not been transmitted, um, corrupted while being transmitted. So again, you have to go through and just make sure um, that it's all okay. So one of the other ones you have is usually binary numbers. Okay, we'll go through that. So it's basically verifying the transmitter has not been corrupted. So it checks all the binary numbers and makes sure that it looks what it should be looking like. Okay? We will go through that a bit more. Now, encoding data. Now, encoding data is, for example, my, 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 my code is FSH for F sharp. The reason they use that is because it takes up less computer memory, it's fast to write, and usually people have fewer errors. You need to be able to, the questions that normally come up on these kind of things are, you know, this person, why and yet, why for yes and for no, what does why stand for? And it'll, it'll go through that and then ask you for advantage, disadvantage of that. So we need to go through. Okay, hope you've enjoyed.